Alrighty, let's go ahead and proceed with the agenda. Um, testnet check-in. How are things doing with Xenon? I see we had a couple of, uh, of hiccups earlier this week. Um, Aaron, do you think that that's just an artifact of the PR you opened with the chains coordinator? Um, like, we fix no, well that, so I'm not sure that that PR will fix that issue. It, it might coincidentally. Okay. Um, yeah, I couldn't really figure out what was going on with the with Xenon last week. Um, I really only looked at it kind of cursorily. Um, but there, it doesn't seem to have been caused by a Bitcoin reorg. Um, Weird. Because there was there was no like log indicating that it saw a reorg. Um, this is the. Uh... I think this is the same. I think I looked at DeWalker's logs for the same instance, yeah. and I, I noticed that um, I, I think xenon.blockstack.org has a different chain view, nevertheless, from his local node because it was um, 404 ing on block hashes that his local node believed existed. Um, which in turn was causing the his local node to to a temporarily ban. Um, xenon.blockstack.org because it um, looked like it was misbehaving, like saying that you have a hash in your block end and then lying about, and then saying like, you know, you don't have it when asked for it is a sign that the node is misbehaving. So that's strange. Um, yeah. I mean, a reorg could have triggered it, but if you're saying that a reorg didn't happen, then. Yeah, I mean, I didn't see any evidence of a reorg in, in the logs. Um, yeah, there was definitely something funky um, that was going on. So if, on Friday yeah. afternoon, we just restarted the, the Xenon miner that BBC is operating um, without doing a, a chain reset. Um, and then, but like the Bitcoin D was still running. Um, we hadn't made any changes to Bitcoin D. And when that miner came back up again, uh, it was then uh, reporting sort of a similar chain, burn chain view that my local node was reporting. Uh, and, and so from like the Stacks blockchain perspective, uh, the Stacks blockchain chain height like went from a thousand something blocks back to like 618 or something. Uh, and, and, you know, building off of that tip, now I think it's up to 840. So, uh, so something, something happened there. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure exactly what to do. Uh, we have the logs and I think we have the saved chain state um, as well, if we want to do any um, analysis after the fact. Uh, but my hope is that, you know, we're, we're able to hit something like this uh, again, uh, and, and hopefully we're better prepared to figure out what happened. For sure, yeah. It's, um, it, it's weird that, so I mean, the, the fact that you were able to bootstrap like both your node locally as well as a new miner and have them agree. Whereas the, uh, the long running stacks miner um, continue to disagree. That's, that's kind of disturbing behavior like that. Like either a reorg happened and didn't know how to deal with it. Um, or there is something really wrong with the way in which it's processing blocks. Yeah. Well, I mean, with, with I, any, like if something is really wrong, it'll happen again. <laughs> Yeah, I would, I would guess it's the second. And like, I would guess that there's a bug here um, that we're gonna need to hunt down um, at some point. Well, it, it seems like um, the block download in bulk behave differently than the block download one by one as it happens. Uh, Cause that's what, uh, Xenon was doing one by one and then everybody else trying to download the chain after that was getting a different state. So I think that's where we start looking, not at Bitcoin D being, seeing different things. Right. Well, we have the old, the old chain state and the old logs and the new logs, right? As well mm -hmm. as the new chain yes. state. Okay, I, I can take a look at that and try to figure out what's going on there. Uh, I would say, I mean, it's, it's fine. At least, you know, from a PVC perspective, we're trying to wrap up um, all feature work um, in the next week or so. Uh, and then, you know, the rest of the time, we're really going to be focused on bug fixes and, and debugging these issues. So 
so I'm I'm okay if we wait until you know next week to to take this on. Well, nevertheless, though, let's make sure to save that old chain state and old logs. Sure. And take a look yeah. at it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that, I, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Let's hold that, on that to that. Essentially, yes. Like, just just to make sure that we back it up. If, yeah. Even if if we're not going to look at it for a week, like we should oh, know that sure. we should be able to go back and look at it. Cool. Yeah. Um, any other any other items for discussion on the test net, or is that the only the only big news? That's the only pertinent thing I think that has come up. Um, the, one sort of just a heads up is um, Demon Technologies, Zan and his team, they're planning to run another or run another mining competition. I think starting next week. It's a three parter. In the first phase, um, they're going to continue using the Krypton test net. Um, so, so mostly just an FYI, I'm working with the DevOps team to make sure that they're all set and they don't have any blockers. And then after that first phase, um, I think they'll uh, have the miners uh, run against Xenon, uh, which would be useful and interesting to us. Cool, go ahead and put that in here too. All right, let's go ahead and look at the mainnet blocking items. Um, cost calculation voting contract. How are we doing on this? Yeah, so we have a PR open for the uh, voting contract. Um, Aaron uh, has been looking at it this morning, it looks like. Um, yeah, and I'll be working on addressing any feedback that comes in today. Just if I, as I've been going through this doc, I've uh, if you see anything crossed out, like if a PR is open, I've been crossing it out just so that it's visually easier for me to see like things that are out for review already. Um, doesn't mean that you know all of those things are necessarily done done. Cool. So speaking of which, um, interposing cost calculation on contract calls is this uh, reviewed now? Um, I think it's been reviewed by Ludo, but it needs one more reviewer. Um, I think I reviewed it too, but I don't remember. I mean, I, I would say we're you gonna go over. A, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say we're gonna go over all of these issues anyways when we review the board. So for this doc, like I would just quickly sort of glance through and 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 look at the things that have not, um, we haven't started work on uh, the items. Uh, and really just maybe yeah. talk through them if there's anything to talk about. Otherwise, we'll, we should just switch to the board. All right. Um, the next uncrossed out thing then is the anchor block to hash dependent POX information. Um, this is started. I'm going to try to get a PR open by Friday. Nice. Um, Thankfully, there's no big networking code in here, so I hope it will move faster than the microblock stuff, which was held up mainly by networking tests. Um, cool. Update SQL like Rescue Light to latest. Uh, we can defer this. It's not started yet. Um, yeah. Compatibility with Bitcoin mainnet. Um, do we have any? Do we have an issue tracking this yet? Uh, I don't think there's an issue. I started working on that on Friday. I'm still in the process of. Um, having a local Bitcoin B node working on my machine. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, do you have an ETA for it, or is it at this point just like exploratory to see how far we can get? Uh, <laughs> by the end of the week. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Initial cost function determination. This is also deferred till post December 15th. Is that still the case? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Bugs. Um, so I have a kludgy fix for this that's going to go bye bye as soon as we can actually address this issue. The uh, yeah. priority and header DB race condition. Same with the business. Well, I think that, I think that they actually. Uh, you don't have a kludgy fix for that one. You have an actual fix for the clarity DB and headers DB, right? I don't like the uh, 
it, like in your microbox PR, the headers DB is directly like the headers DB is gone and it's just using the Clarity DB's connection, right? Um, I merged the headers DB into the uh, the blo staging blocks DB. Oh wait, oh, oh, wait. I, we, um, we, we, I think I, we merged two databases. I don't remember what the other one was. It might have yeah. been the Clarity. It might have been the blocks. I see. I thought it was the Clarity DB. Um, Let me quickly check. Like, we'll take more than a second here. Um, I think the Clarity DB is still separate. Like what, what, what we merged was the staging blocks and the block headers. So I think this is still open, but I also don't know to what extent this is a, a cause for concern here. This is the, um, yeah, this is chain state DB with headers DB. This is mistyped here. Um, so that's done. Like that's part of the microblocks yeah. PR. Yeah. Um, this clarity busy handler behavior, this I think is an artifact of needing to merge the clarity side store DB with the clarity uh, morphed index database. Yeah. Um, I do have a kludgy fix for this one that will need to be uh, removed and replaced with an actual fix. So. Yeah. Um, I was gonna plan on starting to work on this behavior once um, I had wrapped the um, the cost voting integration stuff. So like I kind of consider this almost like a post December 15th thing. Like this is more a bug fix than a feature. True. Um, but uh, yeah, should should definitely be doable. Like yeah, it's it's really just needs time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, read only checker. There's a PR for this. Yeah. Um, so is, how, how are we doing on this PR? Is it like, is it in a reviewable state now? Um, so I, I think, yeah. Uh, so, so I, I think I need to rebase it on another PR, but yeah, we can, re we can review it. Yeah. I, I think like it's legit. No, it's, yeah, it's basically, it needs to rely on the PR that is getting rid of the implicit syntax. Gotcha. Okay, so you're gonna rebase this PR on the, removing the, the tuple, on the tuple yeah. PR you're working on? Yeah. yeah. Cool, sounds good. Um, removing user burn supports, this PR I think is already sent, right, Aaron? Yes, yeah. Um, it's removed in the same PR that adds the stacks token transfers. Awesome. Yeah. So I took a look at that one already and that looks like, looks pretty good to me. Cool. Um, graceful exits. This I think is also a post December 15th issue. Yeah. Um, very nice to have. So I see that we got tuple enhancements, variadic maps and static failures. PRs are all open. Can I check all these off? I think we're still waiting for some feedback on variadic maps, right? Um, I think uh, that there are, yeah, I think there's a couple items to address in variadic maps and the and the tuple enhancements. Maybe. Uh, I think I did address the feedbacks that uh, we talked about, uh, like the. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that these have been addressed. Oh, okay. Um, then it may be just time for a re reviews. Yeah. Okay. I, I'll ping, I, I'll check the, the, okay. I ask for other rounds if I feel like uh, it's ready for. The oh, okay. Okay. Cool. So I'll check this one off then because I think this one's in pretty good shape, right? Static failures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, I think this one has been approved by you too. Okay. Uh, yeah. And tuple enhancements and variadic maps, these are going to be done by the end of this week, right? Yeah, I'm I mean, at the end of the day. Uh, I think that tuple enhancements, Aaron, you just want some more tests. 
and via the map, I think I did address the feedback and the conversation that we had around uh, via deck and via deck uh, oh, yeah. behavior. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there were still some design questions, I think, on this one, but with, I think we're on the same page, though, right? With regards yeah. to how to handle functions applied to a variable number of lists. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, I'll leave this unchecked then until we um, merge them in, but they should be done by the end of this week. Mm -hmm. Um, see, Muneeb left a comment right here. Um, do we want to reconsider big integers before 2.0? Um, because this, it, I don't know if we can introduce this easily. Right. I mean, people would need to use something like a library contract that was taking, you know, a list of integers. To be clear, I think Muneeb's comment was mostly just to, to try to understand whether this would be a launch blocker for 2.0 or not. Um, I, I've spoken to him about this, and I think if we have a path to introduce this as far as tax 2.1, um, I, I think that's that's okay. Uh, yeah, I think we do. If, mm -hmm. if, if, if the, the primary user of big integers is going to be um, someone compiling a Solidity contract into Clarity, um, we're already off the edge of the map anyway, because we kind of don't consider compilers to be a, a, a good idea in general for smart contracts, but this would just be part of the intermediate code that the compiler would generate, translating yeah. U256s into uh, um, operations on U128. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so maybe if we introduce the big integers with the uh, integers refinements, then maybe we can say that the historical uint was like a u128. And... Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So either way, though, this is going to be, this is not a launch blocker. We can worry about this in 2.1. Seems yep. to be consensus. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Definitely. Do you want to talk about testing? I think we're doing this right now, like we're doing rolling V1 to V2 migration. Yeah, a bunch of this is already being discussed and we have sort of uh, uh, other tracking documents, I guess, that are PBC internal. So like the test ground stuff is in flight. Um, the DevOps team is setting up an environment um, right now. Uh, and then some of the other, other things listed in here as well. So I, I think maybe we, just, we can just switch to reviewing the board and maybe what I can do is make sure that uh, going forward, we can, or maybe like post December 15th, we can uh, bring this doc to a, a closure and just switch to just using the board as a single source of truth. Um, and any testing items that need to be um, captured, uh, I'll make sure they appear in the board. Sure thing. Speaking of which. All righty. Reviews in progress, or review or approved, I guess. Um, Coinbase schedule and paying forward. It's been approved by an yeah, I think it. Well, I, I think it needs another, another checkbox there. Um, Still waiting on Ludo. And then, yeah, and then I probably need to do some merging. All right. Yeah. Um, intercepting contract call costs. Um, yeah. I guess I still need to approve it, so I can do that after this. Cool. And maybe reach to approve it too. Yeah. Um, this is in review, and I saw you approve it this yesterday, Aaron. So now we're just waiting on Ludo. Cool. Um, Alternative <clears throat> POX optimized Coinbase schedule. Um, this is, yeah, this is, uh, is this merged yet? Or is this part of the, one of the in, in, in review things? Yeah, it's part of the, the one we just talked about that uh, 2004. Ah, great. Um, pay for Coinbase is in absence of sortition, same thing? Yeah. Cool. Adding the uh, arithmetic arithmetic checker analysis module. Last I checked, this was a draft. Um, is this ready, Aaron? Or um, I think that it's like probably technically ready, but um, 
I'm probably going to just leave it as a draft and merge in all of the integration work for the cost voting contract into this PR. Um, because by itself, this PR doesn't really do anything. Like it just defines a new analysis type. So, got it. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, I'll take a look then as soon as it's not draft. Sound good? Yeah, sounds good. Cool. Uh, voting. Yeah, I would say maybe yeah, even just move it back to the in progress column there. Okay. Cool. Uh, voting contract. PR for this was just sent and uh, it's in review now. Yep. Awesome. I'll take a look at that today. Oh, and here's the actual PR. Um, V1 to V2 upgrade support stack for stacks balances and uh, vesting into stacks 2.0. So um, I think Aaron looked at this and approved it. Um, I made a change to move um, all of this into a separate library, Aaron, and re-requested a review on that. Um, and yeah, Drew, just uh, also waiting on your review. Got it. Um, how is this different from, or is this like a, should, is this like a sub PR for the import process here, Matt, the chain state dot text? Uh, this is just the issue. And the other one is the PR to close this issue. Oh, right. Got it. Um, how are we doing on this, the, uh, the change to V1? Um, so I think this is still just being used in DevOps testing. It's, uh, I, I guess we can move out of this, out of this column at this point. Um, is it going to see any more changes? Like, do, are we going to, do you need me to look at it again? Um, no, I don't, I don't think so. Cause it's, it's just for a testing only one. Okay. Um, I think more advanced testing they would probably just like monitor a different names minor namespace or something and just test like the production code i'm not sure Alrighty, um i'm not sure what column then this is appropriate for um hmm, maybe just removing it from the board i don't know what's that maybe remove it from the board like from the um, mainnet board sure Alrighty. Um, also, Jude, for um, that, that import one, um, we have, I think, like two other PRs, like partially blocked on um, trying to get that one merged in. The import process, which PR is, which PRs are blocked on it? Um, so I think we want, uh, I think Ludo has both of them open. We want to do integration tests that actually use this data. Um, for uh, what is it, the paying out the vesting contracts on block mines and um, and using this data in in the BNS PR. Um, are those PRs opened? They do the testing. Yeah, yeah, I think they're drafts though. Um, except the the BNS one, I think, is not a draft. Okay. So I'll take a look at that today then. Um, speaking of BNS contract, I was uh, doing the, the I was doing a final pass on this just before this meeting started. So I will I'll finish that up after this meeting. But I think I think I can approve it today. Thanks. Thank you for your courage. <laughs> That's a good PR. Like it, it's big and it does a lot of awesome things. Um, so this is part of the microblocks PR. I guess I can just put this into the <clears throat> um, review approved. Um, same with this one. Uh, replication API is part of the Atlas BNS contract and same with his own file storage. Um, how, about, how are we doing on this one, Pascal? Uh, I'll try to address it as part of the minor work I'm doing. Okay. Um, and that might be actually happen this week. If I can get a miner to actually mine something. I'm not there yet, but I'm getting closer. All right, cool. Um, Off-chain name database, also part of Ludo's PR. This is uh, part of the microblocks PR. Same with this one. Allow defined cost to interpose. We just talked about this. Um, 
this is the issue for the PR, Aaron, right? For arithmetic analysis. Yeah. 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 Um, Matt, these are the uh, two draft PRs, right? Uh, yeah, although I'm not sure how much longer we should hold them in draft state. I think we might use burn addresses for the Binance ones um, until they get back to us or something like that. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I, I think PBC is trying to figure out a way in case Binance or other um, token purchasers who did not give us an address don't give us an address by launch date. We'll have some other process for them. Gotcha. Yeah, I think it's just Binance we're waiting on now, but um, it, it does kind of like screw up the whole, like the entire like migration testing flow by having those placeholders in there. So just putting in like a stub burn address or something would fix it for now. Yeah, it's so perplexing. It's like we want to give you money and you don't want to take it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in progress, uh, apps and POX anchors should be forkable. I'm working on this now. This is my priority one goal for this week. I hope to have a PR out by the end of the week. Um, Arthur Checker, this is in progress. Um, implement Stacks token unlocking and Genesis block. This is all um, this is all implemented through the series of PRs to the import and export process, right? Should this be review in review now? Or are there more things to be done here? Um so I think, well, there's like the draft PR to do the token unlocking that's still there. Um, we still have uh, integrating the imported names into the, the BNS PR. Okay, so this is still in progress then? Yeah. All right, cool. Update cost functions based on voting contract. Le uh, Reed, is there anything more to this or are all the PRs now, now, up, now, in, uh, now published? So this was actually an issue I created um, that refers to uh, the core node kind of updating its view of which cost functions are um, currently to be used based on the results of the voting contract. And I, I think this is being covered by Aaron's work. Is that correct, Aaron? This is, I, I think, I, I don't know if, um, yeah, I think this is just kind of a duplicate issue. Um, Oh, yes, this is the integration. Yeah. yeah. So close is then to do. Yeah, I think no, it's closed. I, I don't think that there's another, no, don't close that. I don't think there's another issue for it. Um, mm, but you okay. can assign it. I think you can change the assignee. OK. Um, cool. Yeah. Um, Aaron, then would this be a reviewer in progress as opposed to just in progress? No, I think it's still in progress because um, like the full integration um, is not, yeah, it's not done yet. All right. Um, Anti-entropy protocol for unconfirmed micro blocks. Uh, this is backlog. Um, I have not had a chance to work on this yet, but I also haven't been able to trigger a case that requires the implementation of this, but I'm not willing to rule out the need for implementing a separate anti-entropy protocol for unconfirmed micro blocks just yet. Um, modification of mining module is still in progress. Uh, yes. And I, like I said earlier, I'm hoping I can maybe not start a PR this week, but at least get a miner running and then open a PR either late this week or next week. Right. Sounds good. Although there'll be more work, but I, I'm not sure. I'm, I, I'm almost there, but I still need to figure out how to actually get the block once it's when it's to be propagated. Plus a few more bits and pieces, but at least that's, that's, that's the main remaining thing that I think still need to figure out. Yeah, we could, uh, we could add like an RPC endpoint for receiving a block, for example. You just upload the block to that RPC endpoint. But the, the thing is that the miner, no, the node already knows the block because it generated the block for the miner. And it makes more sense to have the node propagate that block because it already has all the, um, uh, peer to peer 
discussions because the miner is not talking to other nodes. Um, right. So either there's a call that needs to be made, or the node knows that the knows it, it keeps the generated nodes, the generated blocks, um, like it does today, and that's how it knows that oh that block won, I can propagate it. Uh, that's my current thinking. Um, Otherwise, the miner would need to keep the track on who's winning. And I don't know whether that's, maybe that would work. But for now, I'm leaning more towards having the, the stacks node just do it because it knows, it keeps the, the current, the, the few, a few last blocks it generated on hand anyway. OK. Yeah, we can, we can discuss more uh, when there's a PR open. I'm fine with either one as long as it works right. Yeah, I, I, that's the main thing. Well, I still have a few bits and pieces still, but at least that's the main thing that I need to really figure out how to make it work best without extracting too much of the node into the miner. Right. So, like I said, hopefully later this week, if not earlier next week. All right, sounds good. Unless I hit a few more <laughs> big snags. All right, um, just let us know by the issue. Yep. Um, Reed, these are just, uh, I think this is just um, overarching issues here on the voting proposal. Yep. Um, so just moving on to SIP006. Yeah. Um, this is just the updates to SIP006, right? Yeah. So. I, there's some stuff I need to change um, in my PR um, just to keep in line with the, what's actually gone on in the, the contract work. Um, so right. I think though, I can probably move that PR out of draft status after I make those changes. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about keeping this up to date until you're, you're confident the code is in its final state. Okay. Uh, speaking of, uh, cost tracking allow multiple input size parameters to be passed to cost functions. Um, this is this a PR somewhere? This or this, this is uh, this is not a PR yet, but I'm I'm planning on uh, starting this today. So I just moved it into in progress. Um, right. So cool. Um, ingest exported data into Stacks 2.0. Is this a PR now, Matt? Or is this still the working routers? Yeah, I think the only thing left on here is importing the on chain name metadata. Got it. Um, this is in progress. This I think is review reviewable now. Support stacks transfer via Bitcoin operations. And Aaron, I think this is also done, right? Or like review approved. Disabling user burn support. Um, it's done in the same PR. So we'll just put it in the same call it then. Shares a status with. Uh... All right. Cool. Uh, new issues. Um, so this is. I should actually put this into reviewer in progress. Um, I noticed when I was just reviewing how we do cost calculation, um, we were um, accidentally billing the miner who confirms a microblock chain, um, all of the cost of the, of the microblocks it confirms as well as the block it produced. And that's not what we want to do. Uh, we want to make it so that miners are only, um, so a miner's block budget is the anchor block they produce as well as the tail of microblocks they produce off of that. And the way that we enforce that now is we, uh, when a miner goes to validate a anchor block, it will first load up the parent anchor blocks cost, set the clarity cost tracker to that cost value, then apply the micro blocks. And if it's over budget then, then it means that um, any block that tried to build off an over budget um, anchor block plus its tail is now invalid. Like it can't be processed. It's, it's confirmed too much, too much of um, uh, resource utilization. And so, um, we proceed only to validate the new anchor block um, if and only if the budget is not exceeded for the parent anchor block plus the parent micro block stream, which is what we want. Um, um, go ahead. Yeah, so I think this is true and yeah, th this is an issue and we should try to address it. Um, I guess what I would, what I would say here is um, this issue, like solving this issue would very likely make use of the same sort of pattern that's introduced in one of the 
cost tracking PRs. It's like the interposing on contract call PR. Like it adds a function in the clarity context that allows you to execute with a different cost tracker for a block, like for a closure. Um, I don't think we actually need that here uh, because when you're when you're considering an anchor block to process, you already yeah. know the last micro block, like the tail of the micro block stream that confirms. So um, what that means then is you ought to be able to just load the parent anchor blocks cost as it was at the end of the anchor block, which we already store, and then apply the uh, parent micro block stream with that current cost set. And then um, if it is over budget, by the time you reach the micro block. Yeah, but is all of this happening in the same clarity block connection? What's up? Is all of this happening in the same clarity block connection? Like, is this all going to get processed into the same mark try? Yes, we reset the cost to zero yeah. at the end of the uh, micro block stream when we start processing. Yeah, in, in that case, yes, I would say that we would want to use, like, we would want to use the interface that is ensuring that the cost trackers are being handled correctly. I guess like, I don't quite understand what the concern then. Otherwise, otherwise we're, we're going to be in a situation where we have like four different implementations of basically the same behavior where it's like reset cost tracker, ensure that the old cost tracker is not dropped, um, invoke with a new cost tracker. I'm not dropping the cost tracker at all. I'm just using reset cost with an execution cost value. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, okay, that should be fine then, but yeah, I guess we, we can see once it's implemented. Yeah, um, it, it's in the microblocks PR if you wanna take a look. It's, it's in the, it's, it, it's in a new, uh, it, it's like one of the last commits I made. Oh, I see. Um, so this isn't a new issue. This is like actually over in review and progress. Yeah, I was just about to move it over. Oh, okay. It's in the microblocks PR. I, I noticed it when I was gotcha. on Friday when I was doing my final pass through on it. Gotcha. Um, I guess it's probably fine. Okay. Cool. Um, this this new issue here, I also opened on Friday. Uh, it's feedback from the DevX team. Uh, right now we. Um, expect callers to query unconfirmed microblock state by first giving the unconfirmed tip from v2 info and then calling like get map or get contract or run read only but with the tip equal set with the tip query parameter set to the unconfirmed tip um, i'd like to remove that the need for the first v2 info query so you, you have to be able to just pass like tip equals unconfirmed or something like that and that would tell the node to automatically load the unconfirmed chain tip hash whatever it happens to be Shouldn't take too long. I can probably do it this week. It'll be a separate PR. Um, programmatic audit of total imported stacks allocations. Is um, this a PR? Uh, there's not a PR. I just uh, created this issue because um, it seems like an easy win and good thing to verify. But if we have some, I think Dwalker mentioned some other audit process that we're going to do, it might make this pointless. Yeah, I think it's fine to either uh, potentially close this issue out or or maybe reword it. So uh, the backdrop here is, you know, we obviously want to preserve the um, accuracy of uh, the Stacks 1.0 export as it makes its way into the Stacks 2.0 import. Um, and there are things that we can and should do there that are more automated and programmatic. Uh, from a PBC perspective, you know, we'll be doing sort of manual um, verification as well uh, during the the actual upgrade process and so so there will be some checks and balances um, in place and I think this issue is just talking about you know one of those things that we could do uh, in terms of a, an automatic audit um, from my perspective I think I don't know Matt like if you had in mind uh, like uh, what specifically you had in mind with respect to an automatic audit like I feel that um, the the process that we have right now for um, the chain state uh, getting embedded, the the actual export process, and you know, checking the validity of that. Like a lot of this work is already subsumed um, in those existing PRs and and the other steps. So, 
Uh, I'm following up on the, the manual audit that we PVC would do, uh, but outside of that, is there anything else that is not covered by all of those things that we can maybe expand in this in this issue? Uh, I mean, like I would just close it out. There's there's like one small thing we can do, which is add um, like I already have that for mainnet, um, and then just compare like the sum of all the imported supply to that. Um, do we do we already have that constant in the two point code base? The total total stack supply. Um, yes. Okay, so yeah, it would just be taking the sum of of the imported data and comparing it against that if we wanted. Sorry, one second. Or I guess it would be a different constant than that one. Never mind. It would be um, it would be like a constant that we have for the stacks 1.0 expected supply from um, all the vesting and existing balances. So th this is eminently doable, I think, programmatically, but there's a manual lot of process in place. So maybe it can be deprioritized if there are more pressing matters. It's my understanding yeah. consensus. Yeah, sounds like a little low priority if we do it at all. Okay. Um, next issue here, endpoint for querying the status of an unconfirmed or mempool transaction. This is in prog. This is a reviewer in progress. It's part of the microblocks PR. It's another request from DevX. Um, it's pretty straightforward to implement, so I just folded it in. Um, all it means is that you can now there's now an endpoint for taking that takes a TX ID as an argument, and it will tell you whether or not the node knows about the transaction A um, and B. If it does, it'll tell you if it's in the mempool or if it's in the unconfirmed microblock tail it has. Um, but it won't tell you in general about transactions that are confirmed. Um, expanded token type methods. Um, this came out of the conversation for the uh, working group for um, the uh, uh, fungible and non-fungible token standards. Uh, in order to, uh, I think I already talked with Aaron about this, but like the idea here is that there's a few things, a few clarity um, features we would want to have for the fungible and non-fungible token types that would enable new types of uh, tokens to be implemented, uh, namely things like Swapper and Flexor. Um, the, all it calls for is just three new methods, um, an FT burn and an NFT burn method, which would destroy um, fungible tokens or, or destroy non-fungible tokens and would make them re-mintable or re, uh, yeah, reacquirable. Um, and also a way to query the uh, total circulating supply for a fungible token, even if it doesn't have a fixed balance, a fixed total supply. Um, and that would be reflected through burns and mints. So you could, you could know how many of a particular non-fungible, of a particular fungible token are circulating uh, regardless of whether or not it has a fixed supply. Um, I don't know if these are, I, I, I personally think these are main net blockers, but I would like to open the floor to this. I could probably get a PR for this pretty quickly. I would say that these are undeniably features. Is <laughs> where I where I land on this. So oh, like, that's true. I guess like the question is: Is this something that we want for Stack 2.0 versus 2.1? Because if it's 2.0, and as you're right, you know they, these are undeniably features. Then the the real question is: What is their plan to getting these done? You know, let's say by December 15th, if at all possible. If we don't have these, we also run the risk of people simply not using the token type. Yeah. Um, so in terms of like scope, um, is this like a, you know, if you t-shirt sizing, is it like a small, medium or large kind of task? I think it's a small. Okay. Well, if it's a small one, then let's, let's move it to the backlog um, and, and let's try to Squeeze it in if you can. All right. Eliminate the clarity AST definition sorter. Is Taya on the call? I don't think so. Okay. Um, 
I'm not quite sure what he's asking for here. Um, I think that he's proposing to do um, basically multi-pass analysis or, or to separate the top level definition processing from the processing of their bodies. Um, so like the way that you, this generally works in languages like Rust or like non-interpreted languages is that um, the, the compiler does a pass first to determine all of the function signatures in the con in the uh, in the file, um, so that it, it knows whether or not you know uh, when it's compiling where to find functions, whether or not a function is going to be defined later, and like what order it should be trying to process them in. Um, I don't know. I, I don't view this as something terribly essential or something that is going to provide us with much benefit, if at all. Um, it's true that there have maybe been some bugs in the definition sorter, but like I don't know that it's necessarily the case that the other approach is less buggy um, or less bug prone. Um, Ultimately, where I would come down on this issue is that, like, if Terrier feels super strongly about this, like, we can open a PR and we can see um, whether or not it is a better approach. Okay, but uh, otherwise, I would I would say that this is this isn't something we're going to work on. All right, I'll just leave it here then. Um, I think we just talked about this earlier, right, Walker? Um, you know, note mm -hmm. state doesn't match primary minor state. Yeah, let's move it to the backlog as it is. I think we, we said that this is something that we want to at least investigate or understand. And if it does happen again, we'll have an issue. To tag on cool. to. Uh, additional Xenon adjustment. Uh, Ludo, do you want to talk about this? Is this a PR? I think it's already been merged, right? Or is yeah, I, I think it's um, some debt that I'm carrying uh, from the previous PR. So can, can we close this or is this still still open then? It's still open, yeah. Okay. And I think we're still um Same. We talked about this last time, the refactoring. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. Um anything in the backlog that needs visiting. I think we already talked about all of these in some form. All right, cool. Oh, um, yeah. Actually, maybe just one more issue. Um, if you just scroll down 2092, the price function change oh, after which, namespace uh, reveal. Which column is this? Uh, this is on the new issues column, issue 2092, right there, the enhancement and feature. Oh, here it is, yes. So, yeah. <clears throat> I, I think there was some discussion on this. Uh, and I just want to make sure we're, we're capturing the decision somewhere with a clear kind of plan. Last I recall, I think the thinking was that we do want to allow people to change the price function of a namespace under some constraints. Um, and, and I forget the, the exact discussion, but we talked about it last week as well. Um, so I so want to make sure we document it clearly. Uh, oh, I guess, is this comment? Uh, I see, okay. And so I guess like the question is, is something that Presumably, we want to do for Stacks 2.0, right? For the launch. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so I think I, I talked with Gina briefly. And so if um, Marvin can take on this this week, then fine, he can do it. Otherwise, I, I'll be addressing this feedback post December 15. OK. So. As a flow up note. on the DNS PR. Yeah, it can be like a separate PR. Do you want to add to the BNS PR? Yeah, you can also assign it to me. All right, cool. Wait, sorry, I was confused. I thought, Ludo, you were saying that if Marvin wants to take it on, he can take it on. Otherwise, you will get back to it at some point later. If he can, like we're treating it as a best effort thing for 2.0. Yeah which is different than what we just said, which is that you'll add it to the NSPR 
No, no, no. I, I, I was saying that I can um, uh, implement this as a follow up on, on the I DNSPR. Uh, okay. It, it doesn't have Let to be just make part a... of the first shot. So. Yeah. So we got on this then? We'll see if we can get to it. All right, any other board items to talk about? So we just added a comment here. All right. All righty, um, any discussion items besides what we've already uh, listed here? Um, I have maybe <laughs> one controversial uh, topic, uh, which is, uh, so we did implement the stacks transfer from the Bitcoin chain. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, what's our take on uh, pushing this further and, uh, you know, <laughs> cause you my contracts. <laughs> I think the the I, I think I have a new argument, uh, which is the fact that if we do that, I think that we kind of open a path for smart contract developers to um, bind their token to the Bitcoin uh, to, to Bitcoin, and so basically, yeah, I, like. I, I really like the idea of as a smart contract developer being able to index my token on, on BTC instead of like anything else. And uh, yeah, I feel like it's a powerful concept. Uh, yeah. I'm not quite sure what you're asking, Ludo. Are you asking if we should make it so that any fungible token can be transferred via a Bitcoin transaction? Uh, so that would be possible if we implement the, 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 the ability to call a smart contract uh, from a Bitcoin operation. So the, um, the reason why, we, why we're able to do this at all, um, to, to do a, a stacks transfer um, via a Bitcoin transaction is because the cost of doing a stacks transfer is, is 01, it's known in advance. Mm -hmm. So that way a miner um, would still, so that, so that way the, uh, the miner, the miner can still be obliged to spend part of its block budget processing the last Bitcoin blocks on chain stacks transfer operations um, and not have to worry too, too much about the uh, transaction fee associated with it. Uh, because the, the person sending the stacks transfer um, transaction on the Bitcoin chain will likely have paid even more, like overpaid um, to okay. ensure that their stacks transfer operation gets included in the Bitcoin chain. Um, so it doesn't pose a DDoS vulnerability. Um, but doing this for arbitrary smart contracts, however, does uh, because we don't have a good way or even a known way um, right now to uh, make it so that the person sending the um, on-chain operation um, gets appropriately billed by the miner for the compute budget yeah. they consume. It might be possible to do this, um, but that's, that's a big feasibility blocker until we have a good way of doing that. Yeah. The, yeah. mi the miner doesn't get compensated for that Bitcoin transaction for Bitcoin trans the SDX transfer for Bitcoin because there's no SDX to win from this, right? Correct. Yeah, That's they correct. don't they don't receive. Yeah. So what what incentive do the miners have to include that block? Then? Their block is illegal if they don't include it. Anyone who mines in that Bitcoin block must include those transactions. So it's not like we're being unfair. Like if, if the market doesn't support it, then no one mines a sortition at all in that block. And then those on-chain Bitcoin, those on-chain stacks transfer operations just get dropped. But, and I'm thinking for more the work I've been doing in miner, does it even get into the mempool? 
as a transaction to include? Nope. So the, the miner has to also look for all the... So, so some background on this. The only reason we're doing this at all is because there are some people who own tokens right now on Stacks 1.0 um, who used the uh, Bitcoin derivation path for deriving their, their private keys and addresses. And if we uh, migrate their balances to Stacks 2.0 and use the Stacks derivation path, they will not be able to spend their tokens. Um, so the only way we can ensure that these users are still able to spend their tokens post 2.0 is if we if, is if we allow them to send a Bitcoin transaction using the Bitcoin derivation path to sign it. If we didn't have that problem, then we wouldn't have even considered this, I don't think. Yeah, I, I think that's so true. That I'm still, um, I'm, I'm, I'm still to your, how to, no, go ahead, sorry. Oh yeah, to your point, Pascal, about like how this transaction even gets found, it's like the same way that all Bitcoin, like when you run as a stacks miner, like you have to monitor the Bitcoin network for block commits and key registrations and stack stacks operations. Like you're already monitoring the Bitcoin network and you pick up these operations in the same way that you pick up a leader block commit. Um, the miner doesn't. Yes, the miner does. Well, that, not not the code I've been working on. It just relies um, on whatever the, the if you stacks, take a look at this. Yeah, the, if you take a look at this that, PR, you'll see the changes in. Yeah, the I, 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 I haven't been following PRs. So I'll uh, okay. open the tab to look at it later today. But um, currently, the the miner code I've been working on doesn't monitor anything on the Bitcoin chain. It just sends stuff to the Bitcoin chain, but doesn't monitor. And just redoing. Yeah. So the the information from the Bitcoin chain comes from there's like the burn chain slash burn chains RS file, um, and then there's the sortition DB. Um, both of those are monitoring and then importing data from Bitcoin. Yeah, but the the miner um, code doesn't use these databases. At least the current. It just finds a bunch of transaction IDs and asks the node to generate a block. Unless magically the node decides to add these, because hey, yes. the, the node <laughs> knows that. Yes. The miner does. So that's, yes. So that's how it, I guess, it works currently is during the, the block generation, like when you do the initial block setup, um, that's when it includes these. Same, it's like sort of the same time that it um, right, um, right includes like confirmed micro blocks and stuff like that. Yeah, that was my next question is because currently I haven't even considered micro blocks because uh, the miner still has a choice whether to include some micro block or not, right? Or not. Yep. You can ignore all micro blocks if you want to. Well, that's currently what it's doing, but. <laughs> Uh, eventually, to be a good citizen, and will want to actually include these in the next block. But uh, so, I don't it know. depend on how your miner works. Um, if your miner is relying on the node to process the transactions for you and to give you a state route um, and to give you a fully uh, fleshed out block for you to just sign and fill in your public key hash then it should be the case that the current miner just does all of this work for you. Like it will generate the state route from the microblock stream it knows about, and it will include the on Bitcoin operations that it knows about. And it will just give you a block with a blank um, public key hash. Yeah, I'll have to look at what the, the PR actually does, but otherwise we can talk about it some more. So I'm, I would need to see your PR to know exactly uh, what kind of advice to give on this. Um, but it's my it's my high level understanding that the the way in which your miner works, and please correct me if I'm wrong, because this is a very big assumption. I, I'm assuming that your miner is asking the node um, to give it a block that it assembles itself using whatever information it has in its databases, and then from right, there, yeah, currently that you give it the main key things that the miner 
requires is the list of transactions, but the node could add more than these, especially the Bitcoin ones that the miner wouldn't know about. Yeah, and it could and also maybe the, the micro block, or they could be a flag to say include all micro blocks, or just don't, or, or maybe add an RPC call to know what micro blocks were added since the last block, and then the miner can see whether he wants to include these in the block or not. Yeah, that that's so, all. Those are all doable things. Like right. Yeah. The state ma mapping the state that currently exists in the system onto a set of RPC calls to give you that should be pretty straightforward. Right. Yeah. Because currently the micro block, I know there was something coming, but that, that's not something I even considered. But I think it can be added on top of whatever I've been doing as mm -hmm. a as a next step. Well, it's not the next step, but the few steps down the road after I'm, I'm, I can actually mine something valid. Yep. Okay. Yeah, no, we can do this piecemeal. Like you don't have to, every, no, it could be the case that the miner only works on anchor blocks for the time being, for example, and then we can just review that. Right, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, okay. Ready, uh, we are five minutes over. Um, is there anything else? All right, I'm gonna stop recording.